Hey there and welcome to Costa Rica Story and today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of living in Ovita, Costa Rica and surrounding areas. I'm going to give you 10 reasons to love Ovita followed by 10 reasons why Ovita may not be right for you. And we're going to start with the positives first. The number one pro of living in Uvita, Costa Rica is it's a, it's a friendly town with a good sense of community and is more than willing to welcome a gringo here. So if you have some Tico friends and get involved in the community, it really will enrich your life. There's a lot of community events and seasonal events that will help you um, integrate into the community if you participate. So the opportunities are there. You're close to many beaches and attractions here within a short driving distance. And of course, you've got Parque Nacional Marino Bajina, which includes several beaches from uh, Uvita Beach in the Whale Tail all the way up to Playa Pinuelas. There's five different entrances, so there's a lot of beaches within the park. And there's also, you've got with a short drive, like a five minute drive from my house, is Playa Hermosa. Maybe 10, 15 minutes to the south, you've got um, play of Ventanas. So you've got that going for you. There's a lot of waterfalls around and you can, your short drive to San Isidro, there's some, a lot of attractions over that way. A lot of things to do. And right here in town, like here for example, I, I see monkeys quite often and hear them even more often. There's some uh, scarlet macaws here the other day. Even close to town you'll see a lot of wildlife. So in short, Uvita is a good starting base for a lot of adventures. So if you're coming on vacation, it's great. And if you're coming here to live, even better. So San Jose Airport is not terribly far from here. If there's not much traffic, you can do it in three and a half hours. It's more common for it to be a four or five hour drive. And during the rainy season, you, you really don't know. but it's a paved road all the way to San Jose from Uvita. So thinking more about this, this one, it, it depends on your perspective because it, it could be a pro or it could be con. To me, three and a half hours on a good day to get to the airport isn't really too bad. No snow, no cold, no icy roads, no scraping your car off before you have to go to work. Typically the weather here is in the low 80s Fahrenheit uh, most of the time. It's during the dry season, it gets maybe 10 degrees warmer. That's why I'm, it's the morning right now and I, it's, it is the dry season, it, it's uh, March. So uh, the morning time is the time to get things done here during this time of year. Well actually during any time of year, the morning is the best. Number five, you can do your outdoor sports all year long here, whether it's swimming, uh, cycling, kayaking, paddle boarding. You can do that all year here. Back when, when I lived in upstate New York, I couldn't do that. And there's other sports like running and things like that that are more comfortable to do you know, in, the, in the nice weather as opposed to running on a, a frozen road or something. I mean, it, here, it, if you're going to do an outdoor activity, it, you tend to want to do it early in the morning before the sun gets up too much. That's, your, that's the main inhibitor would be the sun. In the rainy season, it gets a little rainy. You have to work your, your workouts around that. But overall, you can do your, your outdoor activities all year round here. So that's a huge plus to be able to do your, your outdoor activities all year and not have that gap of winter where you can't go outside and, and do these things. Because Uvita is a, a, a big tourist town, it's a town that relies on tourism, many people here speak English, which can be a good or a bad thing. It's a good thing if you're coming here and you're wanting to communicate, but if you're living here, it can give you an excuse. It can make you lazy and not work as hard on your Espanol. So. It's a double-edged sword. The 
there's relatively good transportation here. I mean, we don't have subways or anything like that, but there's regular bus routes that go through quite, quite regularly, and uh, there's a lot of taxis that can take you around. We don't have Uber here in Uvita, but I do have a friend that has taken an Uber from San Isidro to Uvita. Problem is you can't get a Uber from here back to San Isidro or wherever. And Uvita does have rental cars readily available here. And you can, and while you're here, you can rent a scooter, you can rent a bicycle, you can even rent a, um, an ATV. So as far as transportation goes, Uvita's got you covered. Probably one of the coolest things is there's a lot of great restaurants here. A lot of great cafes, a lot of great small stores with great service. It's a, it's a, it's a town that really wants to make the customers happy. And I have, I have so many friends that have restaurants and businesses here that I love to promote them because it helps them. But as you, a viewer, it helps you find these great places. And by the way, I do have a playlist of um, guides to Uvita, so you, you might want to check that out if you want to get the details of some of these restaurants and places to go to and things to do here. There's a wide range of housing options in Uvita, whether you're renting or buying. There's, as you've probably heard, there's microclimates in Costa Rica, so you can live on the beach where it tends to be a little bit more humid and hot, or you can go up towards the mountains and it gets progressively cooler the higher you get. And there is a wide price range, although the price range is tending to get on the higher side, but that we'll talk about that in the, in the cons part of this video. Obita is a growing town. And with a growing town comes business opportunities. So for certain skill sets, there's opportunities for you to start a business and make money here. That's not to say every business that starts here is gonna succeed, so your mileage may vary. So that was just 10 random pros of living in Uvita. Now I'm gonna throw at you 10 random cons of living in Uvita, things that you may not like about Uvita. So the first negative thing about living in Uvita, Costa Rica, is it's related to the, one of the uh, pros. You live close to Parque Nacional Marino Bajino with its beautiful beaches, five separate entrances, several different beaches from Punta Uvita and Playa Uvita all the way down to uh, Playa Pinuelas another beautiful beach. It's a great beach, but the catch is, if you're not a resident here, you've got to pay $6 plus tax every time you go to the beach, which, which ends up being very close to $7 USD. So that's a big hassle. I mean, that, that adds up after a while. When I first got here, I think, oh, that's not a big deal, but it is. Having to pay that does keep me from going to that beach as much as I would like. And another bad thing about this is they only accept credit cards. So you have to bring your credit card and wallet to the beach, which is a pain. Also, if you have a dog, which many people do, dogs are not allowed in Parque Nacional Marino Bajina. That includes the whale tail, it includes Playa Arco, it includes uh, Playa Pinuelas, um, Playa Bajena, uh, Colonial, Colonial. Uh, play a chaman. There's the, the whole park. Dogs are not allowed. So if walking your dog on the beach is part of your Costa Rica dream, maybe living close to Parque Nacional Marino Bajina, like in Bahia and Uvita, maybe not be the ideal situation. You're within close driving distance to Playa Hermosa. It's only five minutes. Throw the dog in the car and go. Or you can go to uh, Ventanas. You know that's. 10, 15 minutes, throw the dog in the car and go. But so if you want to walk from your house to the beach to go for a walk with your dog, Uvita and Bahia probably would not be the place for you. I was recently talking to a woman who bought property in Bahia and she, and 
she just realized that dogs weren't allowed on the beach. And uh, she said, if I had known that the dogs weren't allowed on the beach, I wouldn't have bought in that particular area. So it pays to do your homework. That's another good reason why renting is such a good thing to do before you buy. That way you get to know what's going on, you know, what's, you know how, how, what the rules are, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, overall, it's an advantage to live close to such a beautiful beach. It does have rules. For instance, you can't ride your bicycle on the beach. You can't smoke on the beach. No plastic on the beach. You can't have uh, single-use plastic. And there's reasons for all the rules. So keep that in mind. Don't give the people a hard time if, when, you're, when you're entering and you want to bring your dog. I saw a woman. She had a little dog with her, and she, w she was trying to get in the entrance. And he was like, no, nah, you know, no dogs are allowed. And she was... She argued with him for about 15 minutes about it. I think maybe she said her dog was small and wasn't going to be a problem. But don't give the, the guys that work there, the, the park rangers, they don't, you know, they don't make the rules. They just have to enforce them. There's a lot of petty theft in all of Costa Rica, and um, that's on the increase. You can't leave anything in your car when you go to the beach, and you can't leave your stuff unattended at the beach. So that's a big hassle, but it's not unique to Costa Rica. It's pretty much anywhere you go in a tourist area where there's a beach, you just don't leave your stuff unattended. So it's not just petty crime in Costa Rica. There's more serious crime is going up. There's, you know, there's car theft, there's home invasions, there's convenience store robberies and robberies at beaches and things. And that happens all throughout Costa Rica, and Uvita is not immune to that either. So you need to do your research, talk to people that live here and, or wherever you're moving, and, and see what, what, their, uh, what their take is on, on these things. Check the local Facebook groups. Sometimes they have some information on, on crime activity. But it's not perfect. It's something, if you're going to move to a place, it's something you really need to do your homework on. And I really... I, and I did a poll recently on my YouTube channel asking what your biggest concerns were in moving to uh, Costa Rica. And the number one thing was people were concerned about crime. So it's on people's radar. Just have to do your homework. The utilities can be less than perfect here. Lately, we've been having a lot of electrical power outages and that's a, a big hassle. Sometimes there'll be a a short period, sometimes it'll be a long period. And I'm not sure if it's due to the growing pains of all the new houses being built and coming onto the grid or, or, or what the deal is, but the electricity going on and off is a bit of a hassle. You have to have a, an uninterrup un, uninterruptible power supply, a UPS, to protect your equipment here. It's, um, you need to be proactive with that. So chances are the Wi-Fi is also not going to be as robust as you're used to from your home country. It's something that you've got to get used to. It's something that gives me quite a lot of frustration due to the nature of my work with the YouTube and some of my other projects I've got going on. So Uvita, Costa Rica, because of its seasons, the dry season and the rainy season, present you with two separate worlds. During the rainy season, you'll experience heavy rain, downpours, and road closures due to flooding, road closures due to landslides, and it just seems like the rain will never end. And then one day, it just stops raining, and we have the dry season. And the dry season, it's great at first because you can get out and do things, but then things start to dry out, the roads get really dusty, and the sun is super duper intense and it just tends to get more intense all the way through, through March and into April. And April seems to be where we start to get a little bit more rain again. But the extremes are, are tough to get used to. I prefer the rainy season. If I was gonna have one season, it would be the rainy season. The humidity can be really intense here and that's during the dry season and, and the rainy season. It's just always humid. It's a jungle, so it, it's gonna be humid. And you have to take a special care of your electronics. I, I have a, a case that I keep electronics in with a silica gel, and it's an airtight case, and that's where I keep my stuff for storage because 
you can get mold on camera equipment, on lenses and things, and all kinds of electronics are adversely affected by humidity. There's no easy Amazon online type ordering here. You can do it, but it's gonna cost you more money. It's gonna take you a lot of time and uh, you may get your stuff late. You may not get your stuff at all. If, you if you're used to ordering from Amazon at the drop of a hat, that doesn't really happen here. That doesn't happen. During tourist season, it gets really congested here from traffic to the restaurants. And it, you get a whole new vibe. You, you've got different people coming in here and the vibe of the town changes a little bit. And you know, it's great for business. It's a, a, it's a necessary part of the economy here. So I don't like the tourist season. I don't like when it gets crowded like that, but you do meet some interesting people sometimes. So that's, that's the good side and it does bring in some business. So just know if you come here in the off season and you think you're gonna move here, make sure you're here during the busy season so you can see what it's like during that time period. Here in Uvita, we do have some resident homeless people that do panhandle and you may encounter them at the grocery store or, or different places in town. Your favorite food may not be available here at the supermarket. And if your food is here, it may be very expensive. So it pays to go with a local brand. If you, for instance, if you're a Jif peanut butter consumer, you're gonna pay a lot for Jif peanut butter here. So I would go with a, there's a local cheaper brand that you can get used to eating. So yeah, you're, the things that you love may cost you a lot of money if it's an imported thing. And it's getting increasingly expensive for things to be imported. So keep that in mind. Living in Uvita is expensive. And due to the fact that it's a supply and demand thing, a lot of people wanna come here to live. A lot of people wanna come here on vacation. So the cost of housing is expensive. The cost of rentals is expensive. The cost of food is expensive. So you're paying, your, what do you call it? The tourist tax for, for living in a, in a beautiful place like this. The, a, a paradise tax, maybe you can call it. But if you're living in Uvita, it's gonna cost you a lot more money than maybe you think. So do your research, come here on vacation just to see what the prices of things are. Well, that's all I've got for this episode of Costa Rica Story. Make sure you like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, but most importantly, share this video and this channel with a friend. Costa Rica Story, CostaRicaStory.com. Hasta luego.